Hello, Internet World. Matthew here with an interview with somebody I think you will find enlightening and inspiring. This is my dear friend, Marissa LaRocca. Hello. And she has an incredible story of recovery, uh, both internally and externally. And since this channel is devoted a lot to people's physical health, but also takes into account the mental health that goes along with it, I wanted to talk to her about your recovery with uh, an eating disorder. Great. So the, yeah, there's a couple of things we're, we were just talking about, um, such as like addiction is addiction. I think that's mm -hmm. totally true. Um, something else that we just left off on the video on, on your other channel is mm -hmm. that um, getting out of the victim role is an important part of recovering, I think, from any addiction. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll start there. Okay. Um, one line that I put in the book I wrote is, where you place your blame is where you place your power. Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, I love that. Do you like that? I love that. <laughs> That's absolutely 100% true. Okay, all right, go on. Um, so I think that like it's, it's just really important as a first step mm -hmm. to getting over any kind of addiction to realize that you are powerful, you have the mm -hmm. power to make change in your life. Um, and that's going to look very different for every person um, mm -hmm. and every everything that a person can go through. But um, for me, I think uh, it was important in, in healing myself from my eating disorder to, to practice forgiveness and to realize that it was such a process. Mm -hmm. Like I, I struggled with starving myself and binging and purging. I don't like to say that I was anorexic or bulimic because those are labels that I don't know. I mean. Um, I definitely I Those think, are quotes you don't necessarily have to fit into. Yeah, like that's a whole nother video like these these labels that <laughs> that we put on ourselves right, but um, right, right. You know if you have a problem <laughs> Like you if, if, if you're obsessing about something that you're thinking about it at least every five minutes like you have a problem and I might have not met the um, BMI for anorexia, but I was obsessing about food and not mm -hmm. eating every mm -hmm. like minute so um, <laughs> yeah. No. So we were we were talking about it. We were talking about addiction. The fact that yeah. you know, really eating disorder because there's that oh, relief yes, of anxiety. Yes, 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 it's still yes, 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 an addiction. Yes, 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 yes. So, right. so what I was going to say was that um, like recovery sometimes involves backward steps. Right. So um, so because I had been throwing up like toward the end of my eating disorder. Uh, I then would like get clean from that for a few months at a time, mm -hmm. and then I would just when I thought I was better, something would trigger me, something emotional, a fight with a girlfriend or something like that, and then I would throw up again, and I would be like, fuck, I thought I was over this. Right. And I and was so, so tempted at that point to just say, well, um, forget about it then, and, and just like spiral downwards, which I think is the same thing as like you, if you're clean and you haven't had a drink or you haven't had a drug and that you do it again, you like, you're so likely to spiral downwards because there's something we're in this like perfectionist mindset when we try to recover for, from things for some reason when we were so imperfect before it's like we don't then allow ourselves to be like <laughs> you know to just do it once so like right. that was important for me that was a big thing was just um letting those setbacks happen and, mm -hmm. and realize that i can actually learn from those and and make them positive by saying like okay this happened to teach me forgiveness which is part of the journey to getting better. I need okay. to keep practicing forgiveness toward myself. So, um, so, so far, like not being a victim, practicing forgiveness, realizing that it's a process. Um, Screwing up is in the recovery process. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then for my specific, there are things that are specific to the issues that you go through. For, for my specific issue, um, I did have to learn how to eat mm -hmm. well. Um, it, I knew that even when I was not, not wanting to be sick anymore, um, I I did still there was still something there with food that I wanted to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. I um, I went to this the school the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is where I work now and have for the last six years. But as a student there, like that was part of my journey that I don't mm -hmm. think I give enough credit to. Like mm -hmm. that that program really just teaches you to look at your entire body. Um, your it's it's very holistic, like a whole body integrative approach. Um, Sounds great. We're gonna throw a link below. <clears throat> yeah, so people can check that yes. out. Yes, um, and just just realizing that everything works together was big for me. Like your any symptom or disorder that you have is your body trying to tell you that there's something going on. For me, it was like emotional, and, and mm -hmm. um, it's just incredible how our emotions affect our bodies and our immune systems and Especially in the our digestion and yeah. all of that. So, um, so 
through that program and through just uh, getting into fitness. Mm -hmm. I was a personal trainer for a little while. I met mm. some interesting characters along the way that also helped me um, to learn how to like actually feed myself with nutrients. Uh, and a strange concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like um, to this day and, and for the past, like ever since I recovered eight or so years, I, I eat very healthy and I make those decisions to take care of my body and I make the decision to exercise um, as often as my body needs it um, and to just pay attention to the other, the other things in my life that feed me too, like my relationships and my career and um, spirituality and all of those good things. So, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> now, I know um, now Marissa has uh, her own channel. Uh, Say the get, title again. Get Real with Marissa. Get Real with Marissa. I'm going to include a link below, of course. Um, but you have this one great video, uh, Fifty Shades of Gay, uh, talking about the different spectrums of sexuality and identity, which is something that you know triggered your eating disorder yeah. in the first place. But something interesting you said that you know you like to make yourself appear in, in a specific way, so you work out a lot. Oh, um, yeah. And yes. I would, yeah, if, if you just talk about that and maybe give a few workout tips to somebody if they want to do, if they kind of want to fall the same way, they have no idea where to start. Sure, sure, sure. Um, oh, I thought you were going to talk about the, the gender identity part of it, which I'll just say quickly. Yeah, like, please. Like, I think, start with that. I think, like, when you get to know yourself, just a lot of pieces make sense. Like, mm -hmm. I, I was also obsessed for a little while with fitness for reasons that didn't have to do with my eating disorder, and I was confused. They had more to do with, like, my gender identity, and I wanted to be a little bit muscular, and I wanted to just to just to feel like myself so there is a lot of pieces to it that's mm -hmm. why we have to get to know ourselves so you but... definitely got to check out that link to her video <laughs> yeah. which is going to be below that would be great um but as far as uh just fitness tips mm -hmm. i think if you have no idea what you're doing um it, it can be really helpful to work out with a personal trainer mm -hmm. for a little while because i know it's expensive i know nobody wants to do that yeah. um but knowing how to work out the right way mm -hmm. can actually save you a lot of time and give you much better results and keep you from injuring yourself for like your entire workout career so thing. to just to just get the right form first then you can keep practicing that for years and years it's worth it like i'm so glad that i was a personal trainer just so i know how to do stuff right mm -hmm. and i know how to use the equipment they'll also like teach you how to use equipment and stuff um and and i i think just just like with um with anything it's all about like balance and finding your sweet spot mm. I, I like to talk about like finding your sweet spot so how often i need to work out to maintain my ideal body type and to feel good to get those endorphins might be every other day for somebody else they might be good with a couple times a week mm -hmm. it really depends on so many factors like how how much you need to manipulate your body to feel like yourself mm -hmm. um and also just like how accepting you are some people don't mind being a little chubs like right. they don't care I, the dad bod seems to be very popular <laughs> these days god help us all <laughs> I, I, um, I would mind that and that's not it's not because I'm vain it's because I just I know myself enough to know that I feel good when I'm in the body that I want to be in uh, to other people it's really not as important their priorities are different you know so knowing yourself is I think the biggest part to, to exercise and eating well and like all of the healthy things that we do it's like not comparing yourself to what works for someone else and just right. really instead putting that energy to doing the work to finding what works for you i love that you said that because we were talking before years ago when i uh, knew marissa i did a photo project for her oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, i posed nude because i don't have a shame gland up in here i either didn't get it or it doesn't work and um i said yeah i remember i remember seeing those pictures later i said man i looked horrible <clears throat> and you're like, what? You know, like, no, you didn't. I'm like, yeah, I was fat. I was out of shape and everything else. You're, well, you're more built now. I, this is how more I want to look now than then. Now, to her, I, I seem fine. You know, I look fine, you know. But to me, I, I look back. At, and yes, I am going to put some of the more parentally <laughs> acceptable, uh, child-friendly, I guess, you know, non-too-descript pictures up on my Instagram so you can see how far I've come on my journey. And you, I'm sure, you know, you have enough to show where you've come on yours. But I love that you are exposing yourself because a lot of people don't. You know, a, a lot of people say it takes strength, it takes courage, and, and, and it does. And I know for myself doing, you know, something similar. But you have just this amazing confidence about you. When you talk about being socially awkward, I, I, like I said, I never saw it. 
because you just carry yourself so naturally. And uh, I'm sorry to gush a little bit, but I, no, I just thank think you. you have this amazing authenticity, which is actually the first vlog, which I'm going to throw down there too. So I think it's absolutely incredible that you're out there, you're telling your story, and you're showing other people everything that goes along with the process. Thank and you so much that. for that. And I, you said uh, <clears throat> it can take courage. I was wondering about that because I feel like more comfortable doing this work right now more than ever. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the courage to do it before because I think now I don't even, now I don't, I only became courageous seeming about it since mm -hmm. I realized that I don't need to have courage. I just need to be connected yeah. to it. And like, I think when you're truly, when you truly start to know yourself and be happy with who you are, it, it's no longer difficult. And exactly. that's the point. So it's, it's never courage. It never takes courage to be yourself. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And that's the denouement. I'm going to end it on this one, especially because your okay. roommates are getting a little rambunctious. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. And everybody pop over to my channel to check out an interview that I will be doing with Matt right after this. Thank you very much, darling. All right, everybody. You have no excuses. Get out there and live the best life you can. Peace, love, and protein pancakes. Talk to you another time.